I'm an industrial engineer. And not very long ago, I used to make cars at Toyota. And that is where I happened to meet a Japanese scientist, Dr. Akira Miyawaki, who came to our factory to make a forest in it to make it carbon neutral. He made a presentation just like this, and I was so moved by looking at the pictures of his work that I decided to join his team as a volunteer. Under his guidance, we made a forest of 30,000 trees in one hectare. I was so fascinated by looking at the results that I decided to make a forest by myself. So I learned the methodology and made a forest in the backyard of my house. And this is how it looked after three years. After having this forest in our backyard, we could see that the birds we never saw before started coming back into the house, including hornbills. The groundwater, which used to dry every summer, doesn't dry anymore. So we now wake up to the songs of birds, like a Disney princess, every morning. And we enjoy the seasonal fruits coming from this forest. We breathe in fresh air because of the forest. A forest is not always a place far away from the city where wild animals would live together. A forest can be a place so dense with trees that you can't even walk into it. And it doesn't matter how big or small it is. It can spread over acres and acres of area or it could fit in a small space, as small as your house garden. After looking at the results of my backyard forest, I stopped making cars and started a company that makes these forests professionally. I started it in 2011, and since then, we have made more than 100 forests in 40 cities all over the world. Compared to a conventional plantation, these forests, Miyawaki forests, have 30 times more green surface area, which means 30 times more oxygen they produce, they absorb 30 times more carbon dioxide, they absorb 30 times better noise pollution or suspended particulate material which causes air pollution. And all the other ecological services are 30 times more. They grow 10 times faster and they are 100 times more biodiverse. To make a forest, we have to identify the native trees of the place. How do we decide what's native or not? Whatever existed before human intervention is native. It's also called the potential natural vegetation of any place. So we survey a nearby natural forest. And once we know all the species, once we know all the local vegetation, we segregate the climax forest tree species from that vegetation. And then we divide all these tree species in four different layers. Shrub layer, subtree layer, tree layer, and canopy layer. Soil of a natural forest is very soft. And it always has moisture, nutrition, and microorganisms. To convert a barren land into as healthy and fertile soil like a forest soil, we first identify the properties it lacks, and then we identify locally available biomass which can improve the soil on properties which it lacks. We dig the soil, mix the biomass in it, and shape it like a mound so that there is no water stagnation. 
By doing this, we improve the soil water retention capacity, perforation capacity, and nutrition content. Microorganisms produce the nutrients in the soil continuously. If you have microorganisms in the soil, you don't have to add any manure or fertilizer. So we brew a compost tea using the microbes of native fruits and soil from a natural forest. We brew this compost tea, which is full of these microorganisms, and spread it on the land which we are going to convert into a forest. That's how we artificially introduce the microorganisms to the soil. In a natural forest, on average, you find 900 seeds per square meter. But out of these 900 seeds, only three to five will get a chance to become a tree. So we plant three to five saplings per square meter, but we mix the trees of all the four different layers we have identified in the survey. And by doing this, we make a multi-layer forest and fill up the entire vertical space with greenery. After the plantation, we cover the soil with a thick layer of mulch. During hot summer, it protects the soil moisture, and during winters, it avoids the frost formation from happening on the surface. We water the forest, we remove the weeds, but we never prune our trees. In the soil so well prepared, the roots also grow very fast. Within a few months, they develop a very strong network, a dense network of roots. And fungi lives throughout this network of roots. Within two years, the forest reaches a stage when sunlight can't reach the ground. And the soil remains moist because of no sunlight. On this moist soil, when leaves fall, they quickly decompose and become humus, which is food for the forest. After this point, the forest doesn't need any maintenance. It becomes self-sustaining. Dr. Miyawaki says, no management is the best management. The forest keeps growing, and in just 10 years, it starts to look like a hundred-year-old forest. By using these simple methods, in parking spaces of six cars, you can make a forest of 300 trees at cost of an iPhone. This method of forest making is not just for us. It belongs to all of us. A number of people have been making these forests independently, and we have been making these forests in public parks, hotels, resorts, factories, schools, Singapore Zoo to a cigar-making farm in Nicaragua. And people have been independently also making these forests. Our entire methodology is shared on open source in various languages. And people are using it to make these forests in Korea, Australia, Kenya, Iran, Pakistan, Netherlands, Greece, Ireland, and also in France, in Paris. This 21st March, we planted our first forest with Boom Forest. It's on periphery. It's fascinating to see people making forests in the cities. In fact, most of the cities we live in today used to be a forest a long time ago. 
But because of such urbanization, many of us are disconnected with nature. And this is affecting our physical and mental well-being. I strongly believe that a forest is not an... I strongly believe that we belong to nature as well. And forest can be an integral part of our urban existence. Few years ago, we integrated art, design, and forest using which we are making experiential forest and we call it forest caping where we are creating forest where people can forest bathe right in the middle of a city in total seclusion it, why it is important to make a forest in city a forest like this will cost just a fraction of money what we spend on maintenance of the conventional landscaping which we see in our cities. Coming back to forestscaping, this particular project, we converted a large lawn into a dense natural forest. And because it was in a residential place, we called it forest of well-being. The idea is, to make people get lost in the forest to find themselves. We planted this forest in summers, and this is how it looks after 10 months. It's still growing. Our larger goal is to bring back those times when saints, kings, artists, and common people felt at home in a forest. Times when we were not afraid of flora and fauna of nature, but we knew that we are a part of it. So now when you go back home and you see a barren piece of land like this, do remember that it could have been covered with a thick, dense, natural forest a long, long time ago. And you have all the power to bring it back. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much.